Waking up at Costa Palawan Resort is always a treat, as each day at 6.30 a.m. you are greeted with a breakfast buffet, which is included with a room rental. Made-to-order omelets, fresh baked bread, cereals, fruit, and some hot dishes and juices gave us the necessary fuel to carry us throughout our busy days. Eating outside or by the ocean was a constant reminder that we were in paradise. Today we are going island hopping in Honda Bay, and we filled our stomachs to max capacity. The ride from Puerto Princesa to Honda Bay is pretty much one road and takes less than a half an hour. So we're here at Honda Bay, in, uh, right outside of Puerto Princesa. We're going to take a little boat ride, go into some islands, Cowrie Island, Fiji Island. Uh, it's, not, it's not called that. But we're going to some islands, we're going to do some snorkeling. Gorgeous day, gorgeous day. Yes, it's so nice. That's the island of Hawaii. There. Wow. So, how much is the overall? The overall is about two five, which is just under fifty bucks. Two and five for two person. Okay. Yeah. Well, you get your own private boat. Yes. And all the entrance fees, which is like a couple of bucks per island. Yeah, it's but yes. And then you should bring your own food here. You could bring snacks or you could uh, get food when you're on the island. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, the details of that yet because we're getting to arrive. A newly built dock held multiple custom made banca boats, great for up to eight people to tour around the islands. The office for tickets was located at the entrance of the dock. It was quite efficient and took only 10 minutes to book our trip. If you have a larger group or share the banca tour boat, you can decrease your per person cost significantly. The only extra charges would be from the entrance fees to the islands, which were 50 to 100 pesos or $1 to $2. Starfish Island, Pambato Reef, Luli Island, and Kauri Island were going to be our stops today. There's also snorkeling gear available to rent for about 200 pesos, but if you bring goggles and are a decent swimmer, you can get away without them. As we approached the boat, we were quite impressed with how comfortable and clean it was. There were long bench-style seats, a canopy to shield you from the hot sun, and a ramp which made getting on and off the boat effortless. As we were zipping down the coastline, the cool breeze, bright blue water, and mountainous background had Karen and I excited to visit the first location. Starfish Island was the furthest from the dock and took close to a half hour to reach. Upon docking, the captain, Kuya Efren, anchored the boat, and Kuya Willie, the mate, lowered and assisted us down the ramp as we waded through the water to the white sandy beach. There were rocks and corals in the water as we walked to the shore. I would recommend wearing aqua socks during the island hopping tour to give your feet some protection when walking or snorkeling in the shallows. Okay. Starfish Island had nice restrooms and some canopies and buildings where you could catch some shade. There were also beautiful huts that you can rent and order a meal if you came hungry. Where are we now? We are in Honda Bay. We are at Starfish Island. Wow, there! Starfish! Wow. Wow. The snorkeling was fantastic as there were plenty of fish swimming around the rocks and corals. You don't have to be a great swimmer to enjoy Starfish Island as the best locations are only a few feet deep and you could stand up and rest whenever needed. Surprisingly, we were the only ones in the water and to have this area all to ourselves was surreal. After swimming with a fish for 20 minutes or so, we dried off on this sunny day and took cover under a lifeguard station. I'm pretty sure there was someone sleeping on the top floor. I can't blame him since I couldn't imagine people drowning in a few feet of water. Starfish Island was a great first stop and consisted of one long stretch of beach with fine white sand overlooking Honda Bay. There were so few people there it felt like a private island, a romantic paradise. The serenity of this location is magical and was a perfect first stop for our island tour. 
The sun was exceptionally brutal that day, so we took one last walk along the beach and headed back to the boat for our next island, which turned out not to be an island at all. Honey, where are we? Uh, we are here in Tambato. Um, they said it's a lot of beautiful corals. Pambato Reef consists of a small wooden dock, which was built around a large reef in the middle of Honda Bay. After jumping in the water, abundant schools of fish were quite startling as they swarmed around you as if you were part of the reef itself. I was curious to whether they put fish food around this area. It just seemed almost unnaturally packed with unabashed fish that would swim inches from your face. The next stop was Luli Island, with another white sandy beach your feet would just melt into as you walked along its shoreline. The name comes from the words Lulu Bog and Lili Tau, which means appear and disappear in Tagalog. When we arrived, it was very low tide and the sandbar was exposed. Once again, the amount of visitors on this island was so few, possibly because it was off season and a weekday. I believe these islands are much more crowded during the dry season between December and May. We were unable to snorkel since the coral would almost break the surface of the water as the water level was at its lowest point of the day. There were glass-bottomed kayaks for rent, which cost 200 pesos or $4 an hour, which we would have loved to experience if not for the very low tide. There are also some cabins and hammocks you can relax in and just enjoy the sound of the ocean and cool breeze. A breathtaking view could be seen in all directions from Luli Island. I just wish we visited during high tide so the snorkeling and kayaks could have been enjoyed. So our last stop on this uh, mm -hmm. island adventure is Kauri Island, where we're going to mm -hmm. do some, uh, some snorkeling and hopefully see some fish and some lovely corals and walk on this magnificent looking white sandy beach. Kauri Island was the last stop on our island tour. It is the most popular island, is nearest to the dock of Honda Bay, and has many activities for visitors to enjoy. There was a volleyball court, a rope dwarf section for snorkeling and kayaking available. There were also many trees along the coastline so visitors could escape the punishing sun that had turned my skin from a pale white to a lobster tint after a long day without much cover. The name Kauri comes from sea snails that inhabits the water in the bay. We retrieved one of them from the ocean floor during our first video and marveled at its beauty. The island has much more people than the others, with many relaxing in the huts and enjoying the meals with their friends and families. <laughs> You want to eat jelly bee? No. So you like jelly bee? Yeah, I'm hungry. I can eat that if I have, we have, they have here. It's only a bar, so I want to have oh, food. This is bar. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that. Food. I'm just saying The hut on the right side was giving tourists henna tattoos. I agreed to get one for my wife as long as it was a face tattoo of a cowrie sea snail. She regrettably declined. We had only brought a few snacks, so we went on an island hunt for a place to grab a bite while enjoying a beautiful view from under the palm trees. Karen and I checked out the restaurant while waiting for our boat to pick us up. It was late in the day and the restaurant was about to close down, so we decided to just visit the bar and enjoy a three-in-one coffee during the last moments of our stay.
really, really amazing day. Yeah, Three thank you. Thank you sa kay Kuya Efren at kay Kuya Willie. Thank you mga kuya. So we will get our stuff. After a long day, Karen and I were eager to check out some nightlife in Puerto Princesa. Street fairs and bars with live entertainment are very popular in this bustling city, both of which are on our radar. But first we needed to decide on a place to eat some dinner. Of the many well-reviewed restaurants, we settled on Bergen, a Mediterranean restaurant that is supposed to have some great kebabs. They had a large menu with all kinds of Middle Eastern fare one could ask for. I started off with a Turkish coffee, which was authentic and gave the boost of caffeine equivalent to about five three-in-one instant versions. Of course, being starving and indecisive, I had to order the grilled sampler, which included beef, chicken, and kofta kebabs. Grilled chicken, pickles, hummus, salad, and of course, many pieces of fluffy homemade pita bread. There was a street fair on the main road in Puerto Princesa, right in front of the city coliseum, which consisted of some artistic scenes for photo ops and many booths selling all types of souvenir items made on the island of Palawan. The vibe of the fair was created by a live Filipino folk band where highly trained and talented singers belted their chords into a perfect symphony. Of the many stalls in the festival, my favorites included one that sold locally made treats and condiments like hot sauces, banana chips, ginger teas, and chocolate spreads. My family in New York and Singapore were the recipients of these authentically Filipino flavors. Another fascinating vendor had an amazing array of art, musical instruments, wood-carved bowls and plates made by various indigenous tribes, such as the Pagbuanwa and Palawano tribe. The tribes are descendants of ancestors who crossed over the land bridge during the last ice age, about 12,000 years ago. Make it rain, make it rain. It's a rainmaker made by ancestors. Cecil. Ate Cecil. Made by Ate Cecil. Beautiful. I'm going to get uh, at least one. <laughs> I got a bunch of hot sauce. Mr. Tang, this one's for you. That uh, chocolate cow in, in, uh, in, where we, where we, where we, where Malaysia. Malaysia. In Malaysia. But it, you gave me those extra hot peppers, so I'm sending it right back to you. <laughs> I'm giving you some super special Filipino specialty hot sauce, so I'm thinking about you, brother. Oh. My sister and, and uh, Yeah, sure. This one for who? Okay. That one for who, Asawa? That one's for my favorite ate in the whole solar system. <laughs> Hello, Kuya! Balot! <laughs> Balot is one of the most famous Filipino street foods. It is a fertilized duck egg that is boiled and eaten right out of the shell. One of my wife's favorite snacks. Please stay tuned to our next vlog as we travel to the east coast of Palawan, to Sabang, and experience the subterranean river, which was declared one of the seven wonders of nature. It was one of the most unique and amazing experiences I've witnessed in my life. As always, I only ask that you show your support by liking and sharing our videos and subscribing to our channels on Facebook and YouTube. This is Justin and Karen with Next Level Travel PH encouraging you to live and travel well during this lifetime and have the perspective that heaven can wait. Take care and thanks for watching.